I love this Miscanthus. This one is Miscanthus Memory. The last time I did a video, it, it wasn't yet out enough to appreciate how beautiful it really is. Now at the minute, the sun's just hitting it right, which is the reason I'm starting with this one. Because in another 20 minutes, that'll be in shade. But it does come back out again, believe it or not. Another probably hour later, it'll be back in the sun again. It's, it's the house, it's the way it sits. Now, the ones on the right, them ones are really pinky. That's how it starts. Silvery pinky, I think, really. And the ones behind them, almost white. Now, they are going to what I call blow, which is fluff up, basically. So they almost look like candy floss. And that's how I often describe it, because that's the best way to describe it. So that's Miscanthus sinensis memory. A fantastic one. And I now have two in the garden and some in pots. And I love it. So just next to them, we've got this Eupatorium, Eupatorium glut ball. The only one in the garden that's still flowering. I have two other varieties in the garden, but this is the only one that's continuing to flower and hasn't even started losing its leaves yet. But that won't be too much longer. But that's brilliant and it's great for late pollinators. All Eupatorium's good for that. And so, such beautiful plants. This one in particular has a really nice scent to it as well. And we get to view both these two plants from inside the from inside the house itself. So they're lovely. So what I'll do is I'll I'll take a little wander around and we'll see where we're at because I'm starting to see quite a lot of signs of autumn. This is Roos glabra. Lanciniata and it can be quite a spreading tree so if you ever get this be careful it can do 18 foot wide based on really the fact that it will probably suck her out but I love it I absolutely love it I, I love this for a start that leaf and it's pretty much like that all year and it produces these nice let's get out of the get it out of the shadow there you go it's lovely looks nice and that's the seed head it produces those every year and then it goes into one of the best autumn colors of any shrub in my opinion or it's equal to lots of shrubs if we can get the cold weather a bit quicker which I'm not wishing for then that would be even better it would turn quicker and we get to see we get to see it look like it's on fire it's beautiful look at that I love it. I always look forward to this colour coming out. I'm not trying to wish my time away, but I really do look forward to it. It's absolutely fantastic. Now I have to keep this under control, so what I do is I just nip the odd branch back in. It pays to do that because, it, as I said, it's quite a spreading, quite a spreading plant or shrub. It doesn't get massive in height. It's just the spread, really. So that is a great shrub. Worth considering if you've got the room for it. This is Rubbecchia demii. It looks fantastic. Very good for late season. You'll probably be aware of the one called Goldstrom. This is the straight demii. Equally as good, in my opinion. And I prefer the... I prefer the straight one. And behind it, or in front of it in this case, we've got this little Miscanthus. Fairly little at the minute, it should be taller than this. And it's called Emmanuel Lepage. But, as I said on the last video, it's being held back a bit, so we need to make some changes. And the Rebecca will be the change. Now that one there, that flower head, seed head is Miscanthus sinensis malapartus and it's in my stock bed got quite a few in here and it is really is one of the best that alongside memory is a real good one it has a lovely red color and it blows well as well it blows and it fluffs up really nice and that's another thing I look forward to wonderful 
So we've had a tidy up. We took all the rubbish away that I showed you on the last video. And that was all the clippings off the hedge I did. And believe it or not, I got it right down to that. Literally a builder's bag full. And that took some doing, I'll tell you. There's a lovely aster here. And it's a fricati, aster fricati, I monk. And it seems to do well in both sun and shade. Definitely for me up at grassy bottom it does. And it's a real favourite of mine. And that's why. Just absolutely wonderful, the colours. And it's quite long lasting as well. I bet that's been in flower a month and a half already. And it'll continue to be in flower until either it's been fully pollinated or the weather beats it. As you can see, the bees love it. So another great one for that kind of thing. And there's another one in the background you can see over there with the echinaceas. They're still carrying on. Looking great as well. Another more of a white-tailed buff bee, I think that one's called. It's a beauty. And it's just going about its business. It's not bothered about me at all. It's so focused on pollinating those, it's just not bothered that I'm here. So behind it, the echinaceas, that's the Bressingham hybrids, and they're fantastic. They've been flowering for ages, and they're carrying on as well. Oh, that's a weird one. That one there, that's kind of a, a double. Look at that. See if we can get that out of the way for you to get a better view of it. There you go, look at that. This is what nature does. It throws up a few surprises for us, and I like that. I really do like it when it does that. It's the season of the spider. I call it the season of the spider. And I'm forever walking through spider's webs at the moment. And they're always building the webs right where I don't want them. Now this one's lucky because it's building it where I'm not really bothered about because I'm not working in that border at the minute. So we'll leave him alone. Let him get on with it. That's a panicum, panicum storm cloud. Now six foot. Very statuesque, very nice. And it looks good in there. Behind it, we've got a Viburnum David Eye. Just behind it, looking good. Of this Japanese anemone. And it's just an, um, and it's called an enemy hybrider. Just, just an hybrid. Is wonderful. I like it. I like it a lot. It's a lovely white colour with a, a central, central stamens that are yellow and green. Looking from here, right in the centre of that. In fact, oh no, I can't go across there. I was just going to go across there. Now would have, that would have ruined his day if I'd have gone across there to show you close up. There you go. So it's looking good. There's that grass again. As I say, see look, I wasn't joking when I said we shall be losing the light off of it. There's only a fraction of it now in the in the sun. So I've been looking at this this rose from inside and it seems to beat me all the time. Before I get back out to it, it's already put up another two foot. I fully intend to push some of those down into the cloister pergola or onto the roof of the cloister pergola. Because I want to keep as much of that as I can, but there's only so much you can keep. Now, if we can see it from in here, I'm trying to get it further across. You can see it's it's gradually making its way across, but it's not there yet. So what I intend to do, and it's the point I'm coming to, is I fully intend to get the edge trimmer out and just trim that back down. Absolutely hammer it down. And that will be a great benefit to that rose. As a result of that, it will. It will really go for it and produce lots more flowers. Now, I'm not keen to do it just yet, so I'm going to leave it alone for the moment. And just enjoy that. It's just too tall at the moment. It's not doing It's not doing what I wanted it to do. I wanted it to cover the top of that completely with a carpet of green. But anyway, it will get there. So I've said for ages that this bugs me. It really does bug me, this path, because it's hard to cut it with a lawnmower. Another reason I want to get rid of a lot of the grass. And I had this slab, and this slab was originally on the corner of the house, and then I've used it in the garden itself, and it's 
it's been used here, there and everywhere. And then this morning I thought, oh, we'll try it there. And it actually looks quite good. And if I can get hold of some more of those, and they're only ordinary slabs, it will look good down here. I'm not saying I'm going to do that yet. I'm just, I'm just playing with that idea at the moment. As you know, I'm always changing things. So the miscanthus I showed you earlier, the malapartus one, this is the one that's in the garden and it's, it's further on than the one in the pot. So it's not as red. And this is what happens when you put them in the garden. They do change colour slightly and can change colour. Sometimes they can like it where they are and sometimes they don't. Now I've had to move this one about a foot to the right because it was actually in the euphorbia. And this is one of the Wolfenny eyes, and this is the Bob Brown selection. Looking good. Now, remember, remember, we're getting to that time of year when the Wolfenny eyes are going to look fantastic. And most Euphorbia Wolfenny eyes have a lot to offer at this time of year because as the weather gets colder, they will go bluer, or certain ones will go bluer. And then with the grasses behind it, fantastic. Remember, I had a, a selected seedling, or just an ordinary seedling, to be quite honest, down there last year. And I moved it. I decided I wanted a change down in that area. It had been in there for four years and I thought it's time for change. I just wanted to change. There was no reason to change it really. It was looking quite nice. There's another one in the background. That one there. And that one's called Black Pearl. And that's not as blue as other wolf any eyes, but it's a really nice one. Another one that's worth seeking out. Dovecoat's looking good. It's been looking good since this Calamagrostis got to that size and started changing colour. It just looks really nice now. And then I always put Deschampsies next to Calamagrostis, or Cal Forster anyway. Cal Forster won't seed, but Deschampsia will. This one definitely will. It's called Gold Tower and it's it's looking really nice now. And I'll show you something. Here we go. There's a seedling. Now I tend to pull a lot of seedlings out, but every now and again, I leave the odd one in. Just for the hell of it, really. See if it'll be any good and see if it'll suit there. But I can't really call it anything but Deschampsia sespitosa, which is uh, all we can call it. That looks stunning. This isn't a grass talk, by the way, but that's Jurava Itchu, shown it many times. And we've got the bale feeder. And I was thinking about this the other day. I was watching one of my old videos on talking through different features that I'd got in the garden. And it was quite interesting to watch it because everything that I've built and made was relatively new with very sparse planting, but now it's all growing. And that silver birch is looking fantastic in there. It really does look good. And something more unusual. And as you know, that's what I'm always doing. Always looking for something more unusual. And that does look unusual in there. And this, I showed this in a film on its own once. How I built it and when it was finished. And it's settling in absolutely beautiful now. And that's the quarry tile path. Just looks good. Everything kind of ties into everything and that ties into the floating deck. And then in turn, ties into the cloister pergola. So it's like a little journey for me. I love it, honestly. Right, geek. And we have things like this. So that metal gate looking thing was a gate it was uh, made on an old farm estate and it actually did act as a gate on a road where they didn't want people to go and then it was put aside and left there for 40 years and I spotted it in there and was watching it for about six or seven years and finally asked whether I could have it and they gave me it so it looks great I had a couple of visitors, I think it was about two years ago, wanted to see my garden, I let them come and the, the lady gave me this, I can't remember her name now, or the chap's name, I'm sure they'll make themselves known on this video. And that's a toad house, 
and it's up there. I know toads aren't going to get up there because I move it from time to time because I don't want to break it. So I lifted it up there, I don't know, some time ago now. And it's still there, still remains there. I do have toads in this garden now. I come across several. In fact, there's one in the greenhouse at the moment. This fence here is a, a Lincolnshire post and rail and quite a common fence on the Lincolnshire Wolds, which is where I am. But I love using them in gardens because look, they set the plants off. Without that, it wouldn't have the same appeal. Not to me anyway. Definitely not have the same appeal. You can tell autumn's coming because this lithrum's turned already. It's turned a lovely shade of red. I said on a previous video that that went a yellow colour, which it does at, what, at some phase, but it goes this lovely red, orange, yellow colour, eventually. And it's a vergatum type. Drop more purple, in case you're wondering, but it's lovely. Don't cause me any problems, looks good. And it's next to the Miscanthus, which also looks good with it. That Pittosporum's doing well. I was looking at it a bit earlier and I'm thinking that I'm going to have to start doing some sort of a pruning on it because I need to keep that right side from coming too far over the path, although I do want it to come over the path, but not until it gets higher. And it's likely to get to seven, eight, nine foot even. It depends because every garden's different and being on solid chalk it does have an effect on the growth rate so we have to be careful how quickly we prune that and I'll just probably leave it a little bit longer it is evergreen which is what I like about it and it's one called Pittosporum tenuifolium garnetii and all those edges when the cold weather comes in will turn a reddy purple colour in fact if you look close up you can see it's already starting to do it and that's how you know it's garnetii or oh, should give you a better indication because i've noticed lately that there are others now that are showing it but i just thought garnetii did it but obviously not cloister pergola's looking good the polo over there i love that I really do. That polo was a window that was in a house up in Yorkshire. Kathy's friend gave us it and it came from a house that I think was built in the 70s. They didn't want it, gave me it. It's double glazed actually. It's not going to have any impact at all in there for double glazing, but I think it looks great. And as you know, the people that watch my videos regular, they know what that looked like when it first got put in. Well, here, let's take the opportunity to see what the top looks like with those roses. I'm not sure how clear they are. I can see them, but I can't make out whether they're standing out enough. But you can see the two or three foot are higher than the actual top. But it is what it is. Now, as you know, I like to use wacky things and anybody new watching this will think that's barbed wire. It is barbed wire. Those little white bits you can see, that's lights. They're fairy lights that are entwined all over this. And at night, this looks lovely. So that is a two core barbed wire, so it's thinner. As you can see, you can see why it's called two core. There you go, look, two pieces. And all those barbs are brilliant. And although it's a little bit, a little bit iffy when I'm feeding plants through, because sometimes you catch your arm, it's brilliant because it actually helps to hold the plant in place. So they grab hold of the barb and that helps them. Roses are still flowering. Looking good, like it. Oh, lovely blue sky. So yeah, this is the cloister pergola. And I love it in here. Oh my Lord, look at that. Another spider, I was just gonna sit on that. I just spotted it at the last second. So I'll sit on this one instead. Oh, I think I've just broke it. Oh well. So the view from in here is wonderful. I love it. And this is the whole purpose of putting the seats in here and building it. I wanted you to have a feeling of enclosure and that's what it gives you when you're in here. And once these roses do get further along and they are getting there, you can see, they are getting there. This will give you even more feeling of enclosure. And these other roses are gonna grow up and hopefully bend over. And in time, Hopefully that'll look great. I mean, it looks great now, let's face it. I do like sitting in here. Not that I have a lot of time to sit in here. 
This is a good rose. And I said to you to get this one because it's virtually disease free. And it has orange at first and then red hips that look fantastic. And I try to leave them on. Now, to keep your roses going, even at this time of year, you should just keep, keep dead heading. But I know that this has beautiful colour once the hips develop. So I wanted to leave some. In fact, I've left quite a lot this time. But it is reflowering, as you can see. It's wonderful. And it's called Starlight Symphony. Very nice to have this one up there. And it's more of a, I think it's more of a pillar, pillar rose. And it's described as a small climber, which I guess it is. Birch looks good here as well. And this is the whole point of this cloister pergola is to give it, I don't know, a sense of purpose, which it's got. So this is reinforcing mesh and I've got this all over the cloister pergola and I used it for growing things up. I've been using this idea since 2004 when I was on the BBC's Gardener of the Year when I used it in a different way and I'll not go into that but I did use it in a slightly different way there. But it looks great. Millennia, look at that millennia. That millennia looks fantastic from in here. You forget sometimes when you're, when you're walking around the garden that plants actually keep developing and then you've got to, you've got to revisit them and just, just watch. And at this time of year, the millennias are at their best and they're yet to go into their autumn colours, which is yellow on, the, I think all millennias really develop a yellow. And once they do start developing that yellow, they look fantastic. They really do. Now this little window thing here, which is attached to, with chains to the top of that. So it's just hung there and it looks quite nice and it's supposed to represent a flower. Now I must have made this 15, 20 years ago and I made it in the traditional method. And it's uh, looking good, still looking good. It is grass season. And I've already done a video on the grasses, so I don't really want to go through all the grasses again. But you can't fail but be impressed by all the grasses at this time of year. That's why I keep videoing them. They're brilliant. Definitely worth getting one or two grasses for your own garden. Don't be afraid of grasses. Not all grasses are invasive or seeding. Good example. That miscanthus are where my shadow is, that one. So um, don't be afraid of them overseeding because that particular miscanthus there, I never find any seedlings of it and I've been keeping it for 20 years. And maybe I've missed them, I don't know. Maybe there's some around in previous properties that I've been in, but I've never found one. The Coriolis is looking superb. That's Coriolis Avalana Contorta. And if you look back in my videos, I did a video on how I chopped that back down. That's it. It's ultimate height now. It's never going to get bigger than that, so you don't need to panic that it's going to become a monster. It's not. It's a shrub if you want it to be. You can continually clip that and it'll stay as a shrub. These are the wildlife dip pools. Still got that weed in it. It annoys me a little bit, but I continually take it out. But it still looks good, it looks all right. Another aster there. Like I said, it's aster season. Really should do one on asters. So that telegraph pole pergola walk looks fantastic now. It's not even a year old yet, but it's settled in so well. And partly, that the reason for that really, is that when I design gardens, and in particular this one obviously, I, I base, I base the planting on what I hope to do in the future. And then I have to execute that plan. Because if I don't, <laughs> the planting can look a bit silly. But I do tend to I do tend to plant where I think it's gonna look good with the new feature that's gonna go in. And that's not always easy to do. This is a Eurobeer Irvi. It's really nice being been flowering for ages and it's one that will it will 
flower in complete shape this one it's a bit of a spreader but it won't do too much damage in here because it can't really go anywhere it's only a small border this one in fact i call it the no name border now this one because it never had a name where should we go let's go up here this is looking great now i love walking up here i sometimes sit there when people visit me we have to go and have a cup of tea there it's great i tend not to sit under the pergola very much from time to time i do but not very often it's looking great brilliant if there's anybody that lives local to me and you all know where i'm from and you fancy coming to visit the garden just just drop me a message or if you're in the area and you fancy coming for a look just drop me a message and and I'll take you for a guided tour around it. I don't mind at all. See, look at that, that looks fantastic. I do really like that. As you know, I like everything. And there's a little primary school there. And if we just zoom around here, you can see in the background, the fields, that's the Lincolnshire Wolds, we're on it. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. There's a Pinus Mugo there. Still not very big yet. I'm hoping for that to get a little bit bigger before I, before I check its growth. And by that I mean before I stop it getting any taller, which I can do quite easily. I'm just waiting for it to develop more because I want to give it a better shape than it's got. And sometimes it pays to just wait. We can become a little bit overzealous sometimes and... and work ahead of time but what we really need to do and what i've been doing is leaving it to develop so that that trunk becomes strong enough to support what i'm what i'm actually hoping to do and at the moment it is it's doing that so that's that's nice and we'll we'll do something with it i just want to whip you around to this now this is just a seedling of matrona and I used to call it Igor the Giant, but I don't anymore. I just call it a Matrona seedling because that's technically what it is. And it is full of bees. Where's it gone? There's one down there. They're all over it, all over it. Brilliant for pollinators at this time of year. And the thing with Matrona, if you've got Matrona, so it's now called Ilotelephium Matrona, so call it a seed of Matrona. So if you've got this one, take a sniff. It actually has a lovely scent. And I don't think a lot of people realise that. There it is, a scented plant. And it smells lovely. Did some clipping. Got the box edge looking good again. Ready for, ready for winter. Don't like to use that word really. But it's coming, it's inevitable. Now this was put in last year and it's a Vernonia, a small one. And it's called Falsiculata. And I assume from that... It means it's pretending to be a Vernonia, falsely. But it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I love it, it's very small, that's it. That's, the, that's as tall as it's gonna get. Now I'll show you one down the garden in a minute that's probably four times higher than that. That is only about three foot, maybe three and a half foot. But it has a lot to offer the garden, a lot. And it's coming into its own now. Behind it we've got my Euphobia Malachi, which I said I was going to take off the bigger flowers or the bigger, the bigger stalks that should have been flowers but never developed to flower. And it hasn't developed to flower for the past five, six, if not seven years this. So every now and again I have to go in and take some of the bigger ones away, which I did. Now there might be a chance that it will flower this year. I don't know. But I'm not holding any hopes out for that and I have explained it's because one of the parents one of the parents was shy to flower and he's known for being shy to flower and this one is no exception but it has a lovely red tip which it gets off one of the other parents which is down there you can see in the background there that one there that is another euphorbia so that's one of the parents which is purple and gold and as winter comes in it develops red tips 
and goes more red. And the gold refers to the actual flower itself. And when it flowers in early spring, you'll see how gold that flower is. It's beautiful, actually. But it can be a little bit more tender than other ones and can be lost if you're not careful. Don't leave it exposed, that particular variety. Most of them are okay. But in a bad winter, that would not like it. Malachi is bluer, a lot bluer. And it was a chance seedling a lot bluer and it does develop well a lovely shape to start with and it also has the purpley red tips eventually now i thought i spotted one the other day there's none on here at the minute but all the all the tips on there are going to become purpley ready type color and it looks stunning really does look stunning i like it i know it's mine but malachi why do i call it malachi not everybody knows why I call it Malachi. Well, the reason I call it Malachi is because we used to live in a cottage called Malachi Cottage. And it was found there. So I call it Malachi. I could call it Malachi Cottage, but I thought when I was writing the first labels, I thought I'm just going to call it Malachi because Malachi Cottage is quite a, quite a long label to write. <laughs> so I just went for Malachi. I thought, well, that'll do. Oh, the rudbeck is looking fantastic in the background. Look at that. That's another massive clump. I only started off with one rudbeck here originally. And then I've split it. And I split it several times. In fact, let's go this way because I'm walking through spiders' webs all the time. The reason I'm bringing you this way is because we get a different view of this. This is Andropogon garadii. This particular one is black oaks. And then the other one, which is Weinheim Burgundy, is that one. And it's just uh, so statuesque, really. I always thought this one, this one was a bit floppy, but I was mixing it up with, with another type that looks very similar at first and then just flops. But I like this one. And it likes a dry condition. Or it, prefer, it would prefer one. And it's got just that here. And it does well on it. So it's all looking pretty good through here. Let's go back through the border. These Catenanches are looking fantastic. That's Karuli. I've now got a white form as well, which is still in the plant pot. I didn't want to put it in the garden yet until I decided where I was going to put it. And I don't think I'll put it here. There's three plants in here, but it just keeps flowering, which is great. Let's fight our way out. Supposed to be a goldfinch, metal goldfinch, and it's just quirky. It just offers something to the garden. I don't know what, but it does. Another Miscanthus there, that's Jubilaris. Quite tall now, eight foot, possibly that one. So it's looking good. That thing's moving on now. It's definitely, well, I'd like to say today it's got a feel of autumn, but it hasn't because it's lovely and warm again. There's another sedum or Isla Telephine and that one's Mr. Goodbud and I really like this one. I just like the colour. In fact, I'll be honest with you, I like the name, Mr. Goodbud. A wacky name, so quite like it. Grasses are looking great against the, against the bungalow itself. Looks fantastic. And a phallus. Margaritisaya, I think it is. We'll, we'll put the name on, on the screen for you. It's nice, like it. Look at them little flowers. And it likes a dry position. Hence it being with these blue grasses behind it. Looks wonderful. Posts, while we're on the subject. Ordinary post, taken out of the skip where I work. Well, not out of the skip actually, off the wood pile. And the bottoms rot out, so they take them out replace them and then throw them and I pick them up and I keep them so this particular post still maintains the iron work that it had anything that's in there I leave alone oh let's get my camera out of the way look there you go a little bit more a bit more rustiness and then there's another one this one here and you can see that this was definitely a gate post and I just leave everything on I don't take them off what's the point it's lovely it just looks good Oh, look at that. That's another Miscanthus memory. 
it's looking really nice. I like it. I, in fact, I love that one. It does really look nice. If you can get hold of this, get it. You won't be disappointed. It does tend to sacrifice a few leaves, not many, but some do get sacrificed. The first year I had it, in fact, it lost all of its leaves. But now it seems to hang on a little bit. And I think if you can keep it in some sort of moisture with a bit of feed, don't feed them, don't overfeed them, then I think you'll be all right. Now, it's, although it's beautiful at this stage, it's still not at its best phase. When it fluffs and blows up, it looks even better. Can you believe? I mean, it's looking great now. It's great there. It makes a lovely clump as well. Don't forget, all miscanthus are clump formers. They're not invasive. We don't have the right weather conditions for them. But when you see it like that, you can see why I love it. Absolutely beautiful. Now this is a panicum and I've moved. What did I move out of here? There was something in here. Oh, it was a euphorbia. It was euphorbia excalibur, which actually, I'll show you before we carry on. There it is, look, euphorbia excalibur. And it'd be fine in there, absolutely fine. And then I will lift that in the next week out of there, cut it back and then put it in a big pot for now. But that was there and I didn't think Euphorbia Excalibur was offering enough. It kept flopping into everything else. So I decided to take it out and put this in. And this is a, a panicum, but we don't know which one it is because I believe it to be a seedling from the lady that gives me lots of plants without names. And she's described it as best red. And I remember this many years ago when she found it, but she couldn't remember whether it was a type or whether it was a seedling that she'd found, but it is a beauty. Now it should have been put in the garden a lot earlier than this. In fact, it was, but it was in, it was in the boardwalk border and I moved it this week and put it here. And it's looking good. Now, when you move stuff at this time of year, dig the hole, put at least two gallons of water in, put the plant in, backfill, and then give it another two gallons. Nine times out of 10, you'll have a successful, a successful removal of the plant and it shouldn't die. This is a Veronicastrum. Still not sure if it's adoration, but it's going into its autumn colours. You can see more yellow than they are green. And I like it. I like this colour. They do get better. And behind it, one of, the, in my opinion, anyway, one of the best aces. Acer Aconitifolium. And for the colour, for the autumn colour, it is a stunner. There's lots of aces out there that look good, but I particularly like this one. Beautiful. It's still not a massive plant, but it's way bigger than when I bought it. It was only about a foot and a half when I bought it. It's now seven foot, developing nicely. Got a funny shape because I, I edited two other previous houses and, and I cut according to where it was in them places. And, and then we moved again, put it in here, and I decided it's gonna stay here. So I've left it alone to do what it needs to do. Japanese garden looking quite good. In fact, it's looking beautiful. Looking beautiful. Not a lot to say about it, because, you know, it is what it is. Some of the aces will go into a stunning colour once it kicks in, but it's settling in nicely. It just needs another two or three years before we can really have a good talk about it and see how it's progressed. Some of this board has got to be changed. Got to change this, do me head in. As you know, I changed this border this year and that was to be the main feature of it. And now it's just over planted way too much, too much over planting in there, but we can deal with that. That's not going to be a problem. Sanguasorba, that's Acusinensis and that's Lilac Squirrel. Look at it, it's still looking good. I'm surprised it's flowering this late. It seems to be doing well though. And then they go to this colour. And that's a home for that lady bear. Look at it, sat there doing no. Wonder what it's thinking. Oh, while we're here, let's go to this one. Now this is a tree. Well, it's a shrub actually. It's a shrub. And the colour is amazing. It's called, the variety is called Persian Spire. 
and it goes this lovely colour. Now I'm not convinced I've got it in the right place. I think it's because I've moved it a couple of times when I shouldn't have. But it's not done much growing since I put it in. Melinia's looking good in this border. There's two types of Melinia in here. They're both looking good. One's Cal Forster, which is that taller variety. And then the one to the left, smaller variety, is called Storm Cloud. But I can't find it on the internet. As I've said before, this is a Sorbus. It's lovely. It's called Scalaris. It's probably the, the best one I've got, really, that's doing the best anyway. I think it's just in a good position. Oh, look at that tree. This is called the driveway tree, or is known as the driveway tree. And it's a, a betula, betula pendula, and it's called Joe Lep or Joe's tree. Fantastic. It's only been in there three years, three and a half maybe at a push. It's looking brilliant. I was looking at it when I came in the driveway the other day. And it just looked stunning against the against the house when you could see the the actual house behind it. It looked fantastic. And again, it just catches you. Helenium's a Pretty much done this one's been flowering forever and i do believe now that this is one called riverton beauty the friend who gives me lots of plants and doesn't name them didn't name this one because she didn't know the name because her cousin gave her it but i think it's called riverton beauty and a beauty it is so yeah things looking good going into autumn colors ah there's the there's a miscanthus memory again look at that it's just amazing this one I love it. Absolutely love this one. Because Miscanthus are my favourite species of grass by a mile. I always go on about them. And for a very good reason. And this Aconitum is doing really well. It's finally come out. Be careful if you get this one. Its common name is Monksud and it's the one that they used to use to kill people with. So be careful. When you do anything with this, wear gloves. But yeah, lovely, lovely colour. Lovely colour. So the name of this one, I've still got the label, so I'll, I'll show you it. Then I won't have to type this one in. There you go. Aconitum carmichaeli, the Wilsonii group. Tall, sturdy, erect stems, burr large, violet blue, hooded flowers in September. Sun or part shade. Five to six foot. So what's that? Mm, four and a half, <laughs> I think, at the minute. But it's nice, isn't it? It's definitely nice. So yeah, that's really nice. Now behind it, there's another Miscanthus. It's not flowering yet. We've got another month, I think, before that'll flower. That's Cosmopolitan. It has a massive pink flower. Absolutely huge. And we'll show you that once it does come out. Obviously, we've got to show you this. Looking good. That's the Miscanthus Lutaria riparius. Fantastic. I love that one. Absolutely superb. Let's go into the nook. We'll uh, see what's going on in here. I did do a bit of pruning. I wanted to really prune it with secateurs, but I decided to go for it with the edge trimmer and give it a shape. It was looking quite nice, but it was getting a bit too invasive. Oh, too sprawling, so I had to take it back a bit. Let's have a look at this. This this euphorbia is definitely impressing me. Definitely. And it's called Euphorbia Whistleberry Garnet. And the garnet is because of that. But the colour's amazing. The seed heads have not stopped. It's solid, this plant. Absolutely solid. And I really like it. It's only failing is one of its parents is Robbie Eye, so it has a little tendency to spread a little bit too much. So that's that's not good at all. And the other parent, I'm trying to think of the other parent. I will put the name up. The other parent gives it its colour. And it's beautiful actually. Definitely worth having if you can just contain it. And I can contain it there. The only thing that can do now is either go up the border, which there's not a problem, or it can go through the edge, not a problem again. Martini, there you go, I've just remembered it. 
So the other parent is Martini Eye, and Martini Eye gives it that colour. Or that colour. It's stunning. It's definitely worth having. Solid it is. Absolutely solid. So the nook is still looking good. Still enjoying this. I could do with a little bit more growth in that little burr section here. I did put some hawthorn edging plants in there, but then what did I do? Went and, went and sprayed them. Oops. Went and sprayed them off. By mistake. That's nice, isn't it? That's Sorbus. Oh, that Sorbus is looking good as well. And that's Leonard Messel. Beautiful, beautiful small tree at the moment. It will get taller. Whereas Autumn Spire, which I always rant and rave about, he's never been very good in this garden. But that one is looking a bit more hopeful. Because the other one is not so great. So this is Fatsia japonica, and look at that, it looks great, I love it. I do love this one, I've had this one for years and years and years. And going back 25, 30 years, a massive proportion of this, not this particular plant, but the plant I had at the time, would get knocked back in winter. But it would always come back, always come back. But here, I knew I'd put it in the right position because as you can see, it gets lots of sun. It's very well protected and it's growing lovely. And I'm going to let it keep growing because it, to a degree anyway, it's protecting this. And this is a solitary bee home that Des made for me, my neighbor two doors away. And look at it, full of them. Each one of those contains an egg. And this is the second year it's been in and we've had lots and lots of solitary bees coming out of that. It's lovely and warm today. I've been busy all, all day. I'll, I'll try and quickly show you what I've done, but I just wanted to, to show you this euphorbia. And this euphorbia is, is a new one, or su supposedly fairly new. It's called Miner's Merlot. Now mine isn't a very big version of that at the moment. It will get bigger, it's only been in a year. It was tiny when I put it in. It has this wonderful color practically all the time. And I do like it. I do like it. I wasn't sure about it in my, one of my previous videos. I mentioned that I wasn't sure and time would tell whether that was any good. Because when I put it in, it just didn't like it. It just looked like it was gonna die, but it didn't. And there we are. So it's worth persevering. And what's it done? Gone and produced me a little seed next to it because it was in flower. And that seed, you probably can just make out, has got some colour in it. So it's likely to be similar to this one. So I can't call it Miner's Merlot, but I can call it Miner's Merlot seedling. It's wonderful, so get that one. It's fantastic. Oh, let's show you this while I'm here. Now this is Millie Mephusum aureum this grass and I it actually came in a pot from the friend that never never names the plants right <laughs> not, not always let's put it that way she does get some right don't get me wrong um, and this came in it came in a pot two little two little strands over a year ago and I kept them potted them on in tiny little pots and eventually we've got to this stage and that's going to go in there because it does prefer a bit of a shady area really because it loses its colour otherwise. I like it. I've had this in loads of gardens. But didn't intend to go out and buy it because, you know, it's uh, a bit of a self-seeder. Let's go back in the cloister pergola because I want to show you this. And this is a Perscoria called Blackfield. And it's a cracking plant. Look at that. Absolutely cracking and it gets a lot of shade there, but it likes it. It doesn't mind at all And there's enough moisture to keep it going. It's perscaries believe it or not like a, a bit of moisture It's a stunning plant. There's lots of nice perscaries out there but This is a, a nice one that I like wonderful, okay, so Are the roses still doing it here? Yeah Gertrude Jekyll's carrying on. I really need to do a bit more deadheading and we might be able to keep that going another month. Hopefully. But we'll, we'll take you up here and show you this a little bit before we, before we sign off. So we've been doing a bit of work in here. Now there's Malachi, Euphobia Malachi. And that 
looks stunning. I took a good cut in there. You can see how good it looks. Now, is this one starting to take on its red tones? Let's have a look, see if we can see any. Aha, aha, you're in luck, people. There, can you see it? That slightly tinged red one. The whole plant will take that on. Now, if it got cold tomorrow and went freezing cold, the whole plant would develop that. And it's a really good form, a chance seedling. But a good one, a good chance seedling. And it has a very, well, I've already said it, Anna, earlier, very blue compared to one of the parents, which is purple and gold. So look at that. I just love putting it because it's, it's statuesque and it's somewhere to rest the eye, as is this Calamagrostis single specimen. And that gives the garden some sort of definition. But the euphorbia is great. And as I said earlier, they're going to come into their own in the next, maybe next month, two months. So we've been doing some messing about in here again. I said I wasn't happy with it. I said I would mention this, and this is another Vernonia. And this Vernonia is at least nine foot high. And it's called Vernonia arkansana. Beautiful. See if I can put you up to the flower head itself. Not easy. There's one there. That particular one's about seven foot. Probably seven, eight, eight and a half foot, I think, the top one. But they're looking good. And it's three or four years in, and that's as much as it's done. Common name, New York ironweed. If you've got a border with grasses in, put it in. It's definitely worth having. And the Elianthus salicifolius, and this particular one is called Orgialis. It's doing really well now, it's flowering. It does well every single year, this. A very nice plant. Very nice. And then we've got Cortadaria. You may think it's developed more flower heads. No, it hasn't. I've taken that off the ground of the one in the background. Can we see it on the camera? Yes, we can. Right back there. And they'd blown off because they do. The odd one blows and cracks and breaks away and falls. And I just wanted to put them there just to get the idea what it's going to look like from up the garden. And I know that's going to look fantastic from up there once, once it produces its own flowers. That's another Calamagrostis there. Brachy tricker. Fantastic. Take shade. Looking for a grass for shade. Yeah, not going to go wrong with that one. Wonderful. I love them. I love this one. It's quite nice. A very late one. So don't expect this to start developing in, in April because it won't. It's only just started seeding in the last three weeks. So you really have to wait for it, but it's worth waiting for. Definitely worth waiting for. Can you see that euphorbia behind there? That's euphorbia cross pasteria. That I keep saying is going to be too big for the area. It's not going to be too big for the area, but I genuinely thought it would never, never grow it. It wouldn't keep going because I've, I've lost them in the past. But it is, it keeps going. It's beautiful. So what I've decided I'm going to do is, yes, I'm going to keep it there. I think the Calamagrostis to the left may end up having to come out. But the euphorbia, I think, should stay. So it will cause problems. And what I shall do is I shall selectively remove some of the some of the stalks that are just going in the wrong place. And I've already done that today. I've taken them out, but it is such a good plant. Look at that. If you've got a jungle garden or a jungle style garden, Consider this one, it would do really well for you in that sort of situation. If you add that with something like Miscanthus giganteus as a combination, I think you won't go far wrong. I think it'd be lovely. So there you go. I think we need to end it at that because we've gone on quite a while now. I will need to do more, more videos as time goes on because we are going to end up getting into winter pretty quick. A lot of rain is expected soon as well, so I need to be getting out here. I'm pleased I managed to get to this today because I've been busy all day in the garden and I thought, just, just do it now. Well, we've got good weather because the weather is looking good. But if you, if you work on your garden, and I'm not bragging about this one, but if you work on your garden, you could end up with something like this. A lot of hard work, definitely worth it. 
if you struggle with your mental health, definitely get yourself a garden. It does help. It helps a lot. There you go. Yeah, so we'll call it a day at that. I think I've gone on long enough now. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Hope you're telling your friends about me and putting them onto YouTube. Doesn't cost anything to go on YouTube. But you get to view videos like this one. And I'm not the only one doing this sort of thing. There are other people doing it. I do like to walk around Grassy Bottom. I do like to talk about where I've been and how I've come to develop the garden, as you know. And I'd just like to tell you all about it in hope that you will find something interesting. You'll find plants you've never heard about. You'll use wacky stuff in your garden rather than just bog standard stuff. You'll shy away from dahlias and hydrangeas, or at least the boring hydrangeas. And you'll go for something a little bit more different like I do. And I do add lots and lots of different plants into the garden. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask away. And if I can help, I'll, I will. I will reply. I reply to all questions that I'm given once I spot them. And hopefully we can help you. Okay, I'll touch on the next one. Ta-da!